All right, moving on. It is time for Brownells Bullet Points, brought to you by our good buddies at brownells.com. So, a continuing theme of Brownells Bullet Points is get the stuff that you need to have. They have an emergency and survival, or is it emergency and survival gear? Yeah, it's emergency and survival gear tab. And they've got all kinds of stuff. Do you have your your crap, your caca together and prepared and all in one sock? I don't know. All in one sock. Yeah. So we had I, I discovered this clip this weekend or last week or whatever. Uh, Governor Christy Nome. This was going into the Fourth of July holiday. Uh, Governor Christy Nome was a guest on Fox and Friends and. Uh, they asked her what she thought about the situation with food and fuel and, and energy and so on and so forth. Uh, and she laid it out. And I thought, you know, rather than me tell you what she said, I'll just let you listen to what she said and you can draw your own conclusions. So uh, listen up. I guess for this because you can ride a horse. I've seen you do it. And there are a lot of ranchers and farmers in your area. When you go to the grocery store, if you saw meat for a good mm-hmm. price, you'd buy a bunch of it. My mom would always put it in the freezer because she right. got a good price or it was on sale. Now you can't do that. You just buy what you need for the week. It's amazing how people's uh, grocery shopping habits have completely changed mm-hmm. because of inflation and the food supply prices going up. You know, that's the thing in South Dakota. We grow the f- world's food. Mm-hmm. It's right there. But because there's so much government intervention control by conglomerates and even companies that aren't owned in the United States of America, we do have a food crisis on our hands. And and this is something I've been talking about for 10 or 15 years, really, is that food security is national security. When we don't feed ourselves in this country and we don't control our own food supply, then another country controls us. And so this is something that our federal government, our president needs to start caring about because it's affecting every single family. Absolutely. At my grocery, I told the story last week at my grocery store outside New York City, you know the the rotisserie chicken. Mm-hmm. A year or two ago, it was four ninety nine. It's twelve ninety five for it's one chi- the same chicken. Seriously, but, uh, you know yep. the reason it's so high is because of Putin's price hike. Yo. is anybody <laughs> buying? Yeah, that? nobody's buying that. Nobody's Putin. buying that because we Putin know exactly how different chicken. it was when President Trump was in the White House, and it's all these decisions, energy costs. You know, if you look at a typical farmer in South Dakota right now, they're spending thousands of dollars more to run one tractor for a week than they did just a year ago. Uh, so you add that up, you know, you run five, six tractors on an operation, it's costing you a half a million dollars more just for energy. And they put, can't even afford the fertilizer. They can't, you know, and that's the thing that people don't realize is that farmers go to the bank and borrow money to put it in the dirt. You know, they really do. Yep. They they get an operating loan, they put it in the dirt, and they hope it rains. Mm-hmm. And that that fall, there'll be something back there to yeah. pick up and to harvest and sell and feed the world. And it really is a, a gambler's profession. And then when you have the federal government attacking them the way that they are right now, it's a challenge. It's yep. a challenge. Governor, there's a phrase we hear a lot. It, it's not your first, ro- it's not my first <laughs> rodeo. Not my first and that's rodeo. the name of your book, Not yeah. My First Rodeo. Tell us about this book. I know you go into okay, go motherhood and, and leadership and your so, marriage. And your- about a week or two, was it maybe a month ago, Jared? We we shared a clip from a, a the the canning lady, and she had a letter from a yep. farmer, and the the letter from the farmer said that when people say to me, "I just went to the grocery store and there was plenty of food," there is no food crisis. She said, "I laugh because people don't understand how it works. The food in the grocery store today was grown, raised, and produced last year." Mm-hmm. She said that the food that will be in your grocery store next year is either being produced or not produced right now. Right now, here's what we know. Farmers are paying double for fertilizer and fuel, and they can't just pull that money. Well, maybe the farmers shouldn't be so greedy. I'm waiting. That's the next thing I'm waiting for, Jared. They should, Remember, they the, should just pay the cost of their yeah, price. The, so... Uh, The reason that gas is expensive is because oil companies are greedy. The government's not greedy. And so I'm waiting for the meat puppet to come out and say, food is expensive because farmers are greedy. Really? Maybe food is expensive because you forced farmers to pay 150% more for fuel than they were paying two years ago. 
maybe because if they can get fertilizer, it's 200% more expensive now than it was two years ago. And from all that we're hearing is that farmers are scaling back because they can't afford it. Now, well, why don't will, they just go to banks and get loans? That's what they're already doing. Yeah. yeah. So but they can th go that's, bankrupt. That's a fantastic narrative you want to push if you want to you know, have the government take over the food production. It's like, you know, these, these country bumpkins in flyover country, they just... They're just hoarding all the money for the, and the food for themselves. We need to go in there and take care of it. Well, I can tell you this, and I've told it to you before, but I'm going to remind you. This is not the first time the federal government has interfered in food production. They've been interfering in food production my entire adult life. Yeah, but they haven't taken it over. Yeah. Well, they've taken it over by proxy. What they did was they got farmers addicted to free money, to, and then they pulled the free money out from under them and they went bankrupt the banks foreclosed on their farms and then super giant farm co stepped in they're like well we've got billions of dollars we're going to buy your farm now we don't have any interest in running it so we'll hire you as an employee to work on the farm but all the profits will go to farm co incorporated and all the decisions will be made by farm co incorporated and uh, if we need to if we need to grow like scientifically engineered food crop to replacements so we can feed soylent green to the masses and that's what we're gonna do and what christy gnome said is she's it's straight the fact that any foreign government or any company who's owned by a foreign entity would be involved in american food production is criminal it's criminal what, Jared, whatever happened to the, the, when the Congress lady stood up and said, why are we producing critical pharmaceuticals overseas in China and not in the United States? Yeah. And we need to do something about that, and we can't put our health and livelihood under the control of a communist regime. Whatever happened to that? Oh, we're January 6th and gun control and nah, 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 nah. you're not going to have any food and you're not going to be able to afford to pay your uh, your electric bill or you're going to have to decide, do we want food this week, gasoline, or can we pay our electric bill? Because all three aren't getting done. Uh, but you can sleep well knowing that the federal government passed a, a gun control bill. Wow. You can sleep well knowing that they spent a billion dollars on the January 6th insurrection hearings. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all bull crap. Uh, what we need is we need these governors to step up and enact the 10th Amendment and tell the federal government to go fornicate themselves. Uh, so the Brownells bullet point uh, for today is do you have your family's shite together is your community prepared yes no maybe if the answer is no i don't know what to say but get moving all right zach what do you what should they do we have, we do know what to say we have plans for them oh i got something to say yeah you've got a gold silver platinum no, i've got gold, a gold silver, silver platinum bronze. that's right Plan. um the patriot fire team manual is something you should have if you don't have it if you don't have the patriot fire team manual shame on you get it uh, if you do, fantastic. If you already have it and you want more information, buy Nicholas Orr book. Nicholas Orr, one of two books. He has one called The Pipe Hitter's Guide to Crushing the Coming Societal Breakdown. And then he has a more advanced book called The Pipe Hitter's Guide to the CIDC, the Citizens Irregular Defense Corps. Uh, I suggest, I highly suggest that you get those books. And I know exactly where you can get them. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself.